Hi, everyone. I'm Alexander Gladish, and I welcome you at uh, Lua Workshop 2014 in Moscow. Please use our hashtag when tweeting and Instagramming. <laughs> um, I have a couple of organizational moments for you, and then uh, we will start our program. Uh, so there is uh, a kitchenette there on this floor. Uh, you can have coffee when you want. Uh, there is free Wi-Fi. Here's the access. You can, in between talks, you can go here and uh, copy the access. Um, and uh, ah, by the way, happy Programmers Day, everyone! It's 256th day of the year. It's an official holiday in uh, in Russia. Um, and well, uh, not that holiday, but uh, you don't have to work. But anyway, still. It, it's not nice to have it. And uh, one thing for speakers, please come uh, early before your talk so we can uh, connect you to, the, uh, to that device. Uh, anyway, so welcome everyone, and I give you Roberto. Good morning, everyone. Do I need this? Yes, I need it. Okay. Well, welcome everybody to the Lua workshop here. I would like to thank the local organizer and especially Alexander and, and the rest of the team, of course. But you are the one I, I know the name personally. But every, of course, everybody and the the, the organi I mean the, the sponsors and all the companies that support the workshop. So I I like to talk today about the integers in Lua 5.3. It's a new version that we are shipping. It's already in alpha version. There is an alpha version available. And the main change is exactly the introduction of integers in Lua. So I'd like to explain why we are adding Lua and how we are doing that. So let's see. We started uh, since our first version, Lua only has one number type. We started with floats back in 21 years ago. And then we changed it to double. It's interesting that the main reason we changed it from float to double was not because we needed more precision for floating point numbers, but because we needed 32-bit integers to be correctly representable. And you cannot do that with a float, but you can do that inside a double. So that was the main reason why in 1998 we changed it from floats to doubles and till today we are using doubles as the only number type in Lua. So what is good about doubles? Doubles has some very good qualities. It's not by chance that we are keeping with doubles all this long. Well, we have very well-defined rules, although somewhat complex, but they're very well-defined, very well-established and very well documented. And that rules include how to handle overflows, how to handle errors, like division by zero, all that kind of exceptions. We usually have hardware support in most platforms. Now, when we changed it in 1998, that was not so common, but was becoming common at that time that would be, they were introducing, I think, a few years before that, they introduced the coprocessor for the, for the Intel. And 53 bits, the 53 bits is how many bits we have in the Mantissa for the number, so it's the precision, is enough for almost anything that we have to count. So for instance, we can count one petabyte, we can count one million times the world population. If you count seconds, for instance, for any time system, we can count three, 300,000 years, and we can count, we cannot count the all global wealth, but we can count a big part of it. So it's, a, it's good enough for almost anything we need to. But what is bad about doubles? When we have restricted hardware, we, some machines do not have hardware support for, the, for floating point numbers or for double numbers, then they can be very slow. They are very awkward for bitwise operators. It's very strange to define the ands and ors 
for double numbers. Some uh, JavaScript is the, the, I think it's the only other language that, not the other language, the only language that defines this kind of operation and it forces the number to be a 32-bit integer and then does the operation on that integer and you have this kind of, uh, of, of complexity, for instance, because in doubles you can represent FFFFFF and this is a number that is different from minus one and so there is all these kinds of s strange things. And some algorithms now do need 64 bits, like uh, cryptography and some encodings. And some data now needs 64 bits, for instance, handles. Even if you are not counting to 64 bits, you need the, the 64 bits for different purposes. So sometimes we do need 64 bits. No, it's the other one. Yes, I have to remember which one. So, what else is bad about doubles? That the integer is already present in Lua as a second class values, mainly in the API to several, uh, to several libraries. For instance, the string library needs integers to index st strings. So there is these questions, what it happens if you do a, a substring with, with float indices? That's not a big problem, but it's a kind of noise in the language. As from time to time, people ask why it behaves that way. For instance, if there is an overflow here, it's not defined in the language what happens. It just uh, round, wrap around, or it just uh, gives an error, or whatever can happen here. So the idea is to what would be the idea to introduce integers in the language to solve that those problems. So the idea would be to have integers as 64-bit values. And there are several different options that we considered for adding integers in the language. One option would, was not to add integers, but to use long double as a type, as we did many years ago, because a long double should be big enough to support 64-bit integers. We could use infinite precision like Python does, we can have a completely different type just to support 64-bit quantities, like uh, uint64 in JavaScript. Or we can have inside the type number, but not expose it to the programmer, like the lnum patch does for Lua. So the, the idea is that inside Lua, we can represent numbers both as integers and as floating points, but the programmer doesn't see that, it's kind of transparent to the programmer. Or we could have, a, again, a subtype of number, but expose it to the programmer, that is, the programmer can know and it, whether a number is being represented as an integer or as a float. So what's good and bad about these options? The long double has a, a some very good qualities. It offers 64 bits. It keeps the simplicity and ele elegance. Well, simplicity and elegance, maybe it's not the right words, but anyway, it keeps the good qualities of IEEE. It is fully compatible with old Lua because we only would have more precision for everything. And it needed only very small changes in the implementation. What is bad about that? It would be even more problematic for small machines, of course, and even for not so small machines. Some machines do have harder support for doubles, but doesn't have harder support for long doubles. It would increase memory use, of course, because uh, all values would be larger. And the, the worst part is that long double is not part of the C89 standard. And even in the new standard, the, the standard actually doesn't say that the long double must be larger than double. So for instance, Microsoft does have long doubles, but it implements it exactly like a double. And this is completely correct because the standard allows that. So it's not a, a good option. Another option, the integers with infinite precision, 
It's very good, it's very elegant, it's very nice, you don't have problems with overflows, we don't have uh, all those kinds of errors, and avoid problems with signed and unsigned numbers, this is also very good, and it's safe because exactly you don't have uh, round wraparounds or this kind of uh, magic things happening with your numbers. But what is bad about that, it's quite expensive. That's not the, 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 the usual Lua uh, philosophy. It's not that useful in practice, especially when you compare with 64 bits. I mean, when you do integer operations with 64 bits, it's not that common to have overflows. And you still have the big problem in the API. For if you have a large number and you pass it to an API call, would have an error, what kind of things, and then you again would have some kind of second class citizen that is the numbers that can cross the API and numbers that cannot cross the API. So this is again not very useful in Lua because the, in Lua the C API is so important. So the other option, the 64-bit data as a new type, it keeps the simplicity of IEEE arithmetic because it doesn't interfere with numbers. It again, it's very few language changes in the language and solves the problem of 64-bit data, but it doesn't solve the, all the other problems of restricted hardware or 64-bit algorithms or bitwise operations and interface with integers. So it's very limited to what it does. It would be a, a small change. It could solve some problems, but we thought that would be better to solve the other problems too. So the, the other option, this option was in our mind for a long time because of the Elnum patch was this idea as a kind of implementation detail that's inside Lua we have the both representations but outside to the user both representations would be transparent and the main problem is that exactly it keeps a, an apparent simplicity I mean most of the time you don't have to worry about the differences but when you do have to worry it's very difficult I mean you really have to understand the inside so it's that kind of thing that you need to understand something that is not officially in the language. This is very bad for language design. I mean, you, you must know, oh, it is implemented in that way, and those, so, for instance, this is a very, oh, it's not here yet. This is the bad part. For instance, if you have uh, some cal computation like that, that you have a very large integer, and then you multiply it by half, you should have, I mean, all numbers there are exactly representable, one as float, the other as integer. The result should be, is exactly representable as an integer in 64 bits, but you cannot do that computation in common hardware. I mean, uh, so unless you do a very complex algorithms for multiplications your own, not using hardware, then you cannot do that computation, you, you cannot explain that to the user unless you explain all the details that you are pretending the user doesn't have to know. So this is not very good either. So the idea that we got is that integers as a subtype that is, it's more or less like LNUM. I mean, the integers are numbers, they are just numbers like, that there are, but there are two different kinds of numbers, and the user can know the difference if he needs to know. So there is an explicit difference between 1 and 1.0. It is almost transparent to the user. The user, so the, 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 the main idea is that the programmer has the option of mostly ignore the differences, mostly beginners, or if you really don't care, I mean, most of the time you don't have to worry about the differences, but if you have to worry, then you have full control, you have full rules specifying what is integers, what are floats, what are the results of mixing them, etc., etc. This is all part of the language that you can ignore, but if you don't want to ignore, it's all in the official language, not uh, implementation detail. 
So what's the main rules? The main rules are quite conventional. It's not very different from other languages that have floats and integers. Uh, that's almost all languages in the world. Uh, integer and floats, they are explicit different. In particular, when you print them, you see the difference. That's mostly to, to so people be aware that there is this difference. Both have type number, so this is not a different type. If you check the type of, of an integer or a float, they are both numbers because more often than not, both serve the same purposes. And coercion makes them quite similar. For instance, if you compare them for equality, they are equal. If you mix them in most operations, they, they are both converted to floats, so this is a float comparison. So the guidelines that we choose was that the subtype of the result of an operation can depend on the subtypes of the arguments, but it shouldn't, in general, depend on the values of the arguments. So that, that, that rule is mainly for be easier for both for users and for tools to infer the result, uh, the type of the result of an operation. So for instance, for most operations, uh, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and module, it doesn't matter whether you operate with flows or integers, you have the same results unless you have overflows. But except for overflows, if you add 3.06.0 is the same as 3 and 6, not 5. 3 and 5, so it doesn't matter. You can mix them. That's the point where I said it. It doesn't matter whether they are integers or flows. You don't have to know. You don't have to care. You just, what happens to be, it works correctly. For other operations, for instance, division, it's a, it's a little different, different because the result of the division is not always an integer, so uh, integers are not closed under division. So we try to avoid the nightmare. Uh, Python had that in earlier versions. Ruby still have, has that, that you, when you do a division with integers, you have an integer division, but then you do the division with floats, you have a float division. So if you divide three, we have one result, but if you divide 3.0, then you have a different result. So also to keep the, the compatibility with uh, current Lua, we just added a new integer division operation. So the old operation is a float division. It always gives you float results. And there is a the new operation that is integer division that div divides only integers and gives you always an integer result. The other operations, exponential, exponentiation also has this problem because when you do, do the power of an uh, integer number with another integer number, if the exponent is negative, you also have a problem. So we could maybe the most correct or most uh, religious re uh, Solution would be like in, in division to have two different operations to so have an integer exponentiation and a float exponentiation. But we decided that it's not worth an integer exponentiation, it's not that common. And so we just keep the operations for floats. And if you do integer exponentiation, you implement your own or whatever. Most languages do not have integer exponentiations anyway. So what are the, co co the coercions that is how we convert between integers and floats? Well, integers are always valid when you need a float, so we just convert the integer to float. That's very clear rules for that. You may lose some, some bits of precision, but we would not lose the, the, the quantity, uh, the, the, the exponent of the number. So it's a, a s more or less safe conversion. The conversion back has many different options. For instance, some languages just refuse to convert back from, from floats like Python or, or Scheme. They do not convert from floats to integers. Some do convert with some kind of, of uh, truncation. We decided that we, we only uh, convert integers 
floats to integers when the float does have an integral value, that is, it has a value that can be represented as an integer. So for instance, if you try to convert 1.5 to an integer, you have a, a standard error. There's not, this error is not related to this specific function, but it's exactly it's a general error when you try to convert 1.5 to an integer, you has that the number has no integer representation. So it's more or less safe. It covers mo most uses. I mean, otherwise you just use an explicit function like uh, floor or say or whatever you need to round the number. So uh, one big problem with integers when you use uh, finite precision is how to handle overflows. We have some different cases, the, the different parts of the language where overflows can occur. There, is, there are constants in your code, there are conversion from floats, and there are the integer operations, and there are different options to handle overflows. We can just convert numbers, the integers to floats. This is what uh, LNUM does. We can just raise an error or we can wrap around, just assume uh, two complement bit operations and wrap around the operation. So for constants, the conversion to float is usually, it's something that uh, many people expect in Lua, mainly because Lua use floats all, all this long, but in, when you think about it, it's usually uh, useless. If you are operating with integers, there is some reason you are using integers and not floats. And if you, something doesn't fit in an integer and you convert it to float, it's like, okay, it doesn't fit in 64 bits, so I'm going to use only six, 53 bits. You just makes the problem worse, depending. I mean, if you really need all the, those bits, you just are making the problems worse. The error option is a little tricky for unsigned because unsigned numbers are larger than the maximum integer representation. Some languages now, for instance, they accept X constants to be unsigned and decimal constants to be signed, but that could be an option. And But for us, the main problem is that programs for 64-bit Lua could not even compile in Lua 32. I mean, if you compile Lua to use 32 bits, to you can use 32-bit integers and 32-bit floats. And a program written for the, for, for instance, you, you want to check whether you are using 64 bits or 32 bits. And if you write a, a too large constant in your program to do the check, then you already have a compilation error in, in 32 bits. You cannot even run the program to, to do the check. And so the, the last option is wrap around. You just do the usual unsigned operation. It is dangerous, but it solves the problem for unsigned. And for now, this is the solution we adopted. It, we, it's something that we have to see in practice how it behaves. So the, the conversion from floats this is a, a place where error seems a good option. Usually if the flow doesn't fit, if you're using a number, you already have that number and it, and it doesn't fit in an integer, then probably you, you are not thinking about an unsigned number represented inside a double. And it is, again, this is not a very common operation, so the cost of checking for overflow is not very bad because this is, it doesn't happen often. And the other behaviors are not very useful anyway. And for integer operations, again, convert to float looks useful, but it's not useful in practice. And it's ex expensive because you have to check all results. Errors, it's also bad for unsigned arithmetic. And again, it's very expensive, it's unbelievable. If you use that in, in assembler, it's very easy usually to check for overflows. But to do a real check for overflow in C, following all the rules of standard C, it is really hard to implement, or I mean, or hard or expensive or, or both. 
So we decided to, to stick with wraparound. It is very good for unsigned operations. A lot of people use unsigned operations, ma mainly in embedded systems. It's very cheap to implement because in most machines you don't have to do anything. You just ask for an unsigned, in the implementation of Lua, you just do an unsigned operation and that's the cheapest you, you have. You don't check anything. And you at least you have very clear rules of what is going on. It, it may, may not be the exact rules some people want, but it's simpler. And those that need can check the overflows as they do in other languages. <coughs> well, with integers, we now can have bitwise operators in Lua. The main reason we didn't have bitwise operators was because we didn't have integers. Now that we have integers, we can have them. They are mostly conventional, the notation. <coughs> they, of course, will operate on 64 bits, or 30, I mean, in the full integer that you have. You had, we, have to we had to change the exclusive or symbol because the, the, the carrot was already taken for exponentiation, so we put the, the tile for exclusive or. The shift, we only have logical shift. This is the, the most common operations most people use for arithmetic shifts. You can use an arithmetic operation or you can use just some bit tricks. It's not difficult to implement arithmetic shift using a logic shift. So some, oh, I still have plenty of time, some other aspects. For numerals, it's a very standard. If the numeral has a, a decimal point or an exponent, then it is a floating point number. Otherwise, it is an integer number. Print distinguishes between flows and integers. This was what maybe one of the most difficult decisions we made because exactly for most people, as I said, you should be able to ignore the difference. And so maybe it would be better if print prints them as the same. But otherwise, for some people, the difference is, is important. And it is worth knowing whether uh, you have to, uh, to have a, a quick way to check whether a number is a float or an integer. So we decided to make print, print them differently. And most people, again, most people will ignore the, the dot zero if you say, oh, this is one, or it will just even doesn't notice, but this is a, a big break in compatibility. It's, oh, it's the biggest break, I think, in compatibility. Although it shouldn't be, because the, the, the Lua never specified how it prints numbers. It could print in several different ways, but people assume, oh, okay, of course it's going to print the way it prints now forever. And so if we change that, it's a, a lot of noise in a, a lot of programs. And another subtle point is table keys. <coughs> because because 1.0 and 1 is mostly the same, it would be very strange if they indexed different indices in a table. So we adopted the rule that if, if any float key that has an integer value is converted to an integer as a key. So if you add something to 1.0, you're actually adding the number in key one. We already had something similar to this in Lua, but it's much, much, much more subtle. Most people don't even know about that because in IEEE we have zero and minus zero. Again, they test as equal, but they are different values. If, for instance, you d if you divide some number by zero, you have plus infinite, and you have divided by minus zero, you have minus infinite. So they, have, they can give very different results in some operations. And again, when you index a table with zero or minus zero, you should get the same, the same index. You should, shouldn't have two different indices, two different positions in the table, one for zero and one from minus zero. So we already have uh, some best reasons for adopting that. And again, it's very compatible, and, and most people don't even know notice this happening. <coughs> Both to number and read, 
with uh, an option to read the number. Now return float or integer, depending on the syntax of the numeral, following exactly the same rules as the lexer. So if the number has a uh, decimal point or uh, exponent, it reads as a float. Otherwise, it is read as an integer. Of course, this breaks guideline one that all operations should return uh, fixed subtype depending only on the, the type of the argument, but in this case it, it seems quite reasonable to, to break that rule. So, <coughs> one thing I forgot to, to talk, it was in some slide, but I, I, I passed it, is about the, the, to talk a little more about Lua 32, that as I said in the beginning, one of the main reasons for the introduction of doubles in Lua was to represent 32 bits. Now, with an integer type, we can represent 32 bits in the integer type, so a Lua with floats is much more useful now because you would have floats and 32-bit integers with the full 32-bit available. So now we are officially supporting this change. I mean, until today, Lua is officially double. You can recompile Lua with floats. You can use uh, integers. You can change the numerical type. But it's, it's always a kind of a hack. It's not officially supported. You may have some corner cases. And now this uh, duality of Lua 64 and Lua 32 is officially supported. All the tests work for both versions. We fully test the, the Lua 32-bit option. You only change, have to change two lines in the config file. And you compile. You can actually you can mix any combination you want. I mean, you can have 32-bit integers or 64-bit integers. Mix it with single precision floats or double precision floats, what, whatever combination you want. Of course, the most common would be 64 bits for both or 32 bit for both. But all combinations are fully supported. All combinations work in all tests. And for a small machines, this 32 bit should be a very interesting option. It's of course faster than in even not so small machines for 30 for any 32 bit machine the 32 bit lua would is quite faster than the 64 bit lua and so the final remarks of course we already have an uh, alpha version out there and the, the the biggest reaction was concerning bitwise operations people don't even care much about integers, but they love bitwise operations. It is mostly compatible with 5.2. They actually, not a lot of people are using the, the alpha, but there are some people using. And the main problem we had was exactly the print, that change in print, because some programs assume that print would create a number with a specific format, and when the format is not that one they expected, there has some some problems in some code. The code base now that's clearer and more conformant with ANSI C, mainly because we don't have tricks to convert between integers and floats. As I said, integers were already present in Lua, but it's a kind of second class, second class citizen. And so in a lot of places, Lua had to convert between integers and floats, and that conversion can be very expensive. And so Lua use all kinds of tricks, depending on the ar architecture, to try to speed up that conversion. And some of those tricks are, are not ANSI. Even the standard conversion is not com completely ANSI because it didn't check for overflows, for instance. And the rules were not very well specified. What happens in overflows? It's how it rounds the numbers, etc. And now that this kind of conversion is much, should be much less frequent because most of the time when you need the integers, you will be using integers. So these conversions can be more robust, uh, better code and checking for errors and exceptions, etc. So that is what I had to talk. Thank you. Oh, I have to.
And just a moment for those that don't know, there is the, a translation of the Lua book in, in Russian. It's already available. So, questions? Anyone? Uh, you mentioned uh, signed and unsigned uh, numbers and arithmetic a few times. Uh, so I'm wondering how signed and unsigned numbers are implemented from, from the language perspective, how they are distinguished. They are not distinguished. We only have integers, mm -hmm. but they, the, the operation, because the operations wrap around, most operations are exactly the same, signed or, or unsigned. So it doesn't, I mean, because we use two complements, so it, it, the, the only operation that is really different is a comparison. And so, and we do have a comparison operator. Uh, it's not an operator, it's a function that does in, unsigned integer comparison. So what would be a way to um, uh, represent a, a maximum 64-bit uh, integer? I mean, uh, I could use an exponent, which is floating point, right? So it would uh, not represent the, the maximum 64-bit integer exactly, precisely. Or I could use a complement to, to zero. Yes, we, we assume always comp to complement. Okay. Hi. Uh, how do you actually print uh, 1.0 when you do print? Do you use an CC printf or <laughs> you use something else? We, we do ex explicit test for that case. No, I mean, but when you need to represent a floating point number um, as a string, uh, convert it from a binary representation to a decimal representation, how do you do it? Oh, the, the, in general, we use uh, printf. Printf. Yes. Thanks. But as, exactly. But the, 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 what I, I was saying is that printf doesn't have an option that does what we do to that uh, that prints a number with a variable number of digits of decimal digits, but when it is an integer value, it forces you to have one digit. So, so we needed a special trick for that. So part. you first check and then uh, yes. use different format specifiers. Yeah, for we check for for integers is trivial. For floats, we first check whether it has an integral value. Mm -hmm. If it does have, then we do this trick, and then we use the percent %g conversion uh, with printf. Okay. Thanks. As printf actually. Hello. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, I wonder, do you have any specific roadmap in your head for future development of Lua? Maybe some new features that we haven't heard of yet? Um, no. <laughs> we, some, we have some things that keep going in our minds, but are not roadmaps, are just maybes in the future. One is, uh, Alexander always asks about these macros. But I think we now we gave up macros forever because macros is very, very tricky. Not the implementation, but the, the use, I think it's. Thank you. Another question. So you now suffered, uh, well, you still suffered Lua 32. Uh, how widely it's used? Do you have any statistics? For what? For Lua in, in Lua. general or for a specific version? For general. For Lua 32. Like, uh, mm, no. why would anyone still be using 32 bits instead of going to 64? No, I have no idea. I, I assume most people will use, I mean, the, the standard will be 64. It's more or less the same performance as the, 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 the standard Lua, because now Lua is more or less 64 bits because doubles are 64 bits. And so I think people will change, uh, as people change the versions in Lua in general, I mean, when they start, this is something that uh, happens a lot in Lua. Lua it's not a language that people just keep changing versions. They stick with one version and use that version for long time. People that start new projects, usually then they start with the current version. So it, it takes a long time for each new version to, so I assume this one will be the same. But uh, Thank you. Mm, I have three questions uh, at first. Uh, how do you deal with the precision loss when you convert uh, uh, 64 integer to uh, uh, double precision with uh, 53 bits. 
of precision. <laughs> we just throw away the bits. Mm. We, we uh, just do that. This is something that is standard in C, so we can assume that C should do it correctly, and it just specify the, the C specification is what it, 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 it just says that you choose the nearest integer that is representable. It doesn't even specify whether it, 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 you choose one of the two integers. It doesn't specify that has to be the nearest one. It must be one you can round up or round down, and that's it. And so the round mode isn't specified, is it? Yes, no, it's not. And the second question, is there a way to programmatically differentiate integers from floats and how can I explicitly convert a flow to integer? Yes, there is a, a way to explicit differentiate. And you have a one function that is a, a, ty a math type that tells you whether a number is an integer or a float. And there are actually s uh, the um, both, both no, troth. <laughs> uh, F mod, sayo and floor will give you an, e an integer if the result fits in an integer or an uh, 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 integral value in a float otherwise. But there is one function, toInt, that gives you an integer or nil if the number doesn't fit. I mean, it follows the same rules of Lua. If the number can be converted to an integer, it gives you that integer, otherwise it gives you nil. So Thank you me. have ways to, to, to do the conversion in a controlled way if you want to force the conversion and check the result. Thank you very much. My first question is, can I ask questions uh, not about the integers, but about the Lua itself? Yeah. Okay. Uh, once in a while, uh, I had a situation where the uh, lack of uh, some laziness uh, uh, led me to write tricky code. What a I lack mean under of laziness? Uh, I mean, uh, you, uh, if you were able to exactly state the local variable as lazy, and if uh, a segment uh, uh, takes some function evaluation or something else um, to get the result, you don't um, uh, make these calculations until you actually get the value mm -hmm. of uh, this variable. So um, uh, here is an idea. If it will be less tricky than the macros, how do you think about this? Um, I will explain my whole idea in the Lua list uh, recently. Uh, after the uh, workshop, and uh, we will discuss. Is it okay? Yeah, sure. Oh, I hope uh, because uh, I think it um, uh, will be uh, useful in many of business logic code because uh, otherwise you have to either implement uh, the laziness itself uh, in uh, via the meta tables and have a lot of code written which can be easily handled by the language itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And ex excuse me. And uh, will be uh, the reloading of uh, bitwise operators supported? Pardon me. Uh, re reloading of bitwise operators. I mean, in meta tables. Oh yes, yes. It's exactly the same as the other operations. Thank Where you. Do you have uh, under underscore underscore? B and I think I recap the name and underscore underscore B or and etc. Non uh, integer questions are allowed. Uh, uh, we experienced a lot of uh, silent, uh, tricky conversions with multiple returns when you use multiple returns in a single assignment context and everything else is simply you know uh, thrown away. Um, did you get a lot of complaints about that part of the language, that behavior of the language? Because essentially it's an array, uh, a return of an array that is, uh, or a tuple. It's, uh, that's not supported explicitly. It's not like you cannot declare a tuple to receive it. Mm -hmm. So, but you need to convert to a table and when you convert to a table, you lose cycles. So uh, any anything, uh, any complaints about that part of the language? Anything planned to be done about? No, that part? I think the main complaint, of course, is tables with holes. But uh, we can use pack for that. 
but uh, otherwise, about the, the, the multiple returns and explicitly about the multiple assignments, we don't have many complaints. This is not different from when you pass parameters. Again, a parameter list is also a second class citizen in, in uh, most languages. Uh, so. Does the implementation uh, set a limit on the number of returns? Because if, when you try to return large tables this way? Yes, uh, yes, uh, it does. It, uh, for returns, actually, it's much larger, but it's, uh, it's again, it's like parameters. You can have at most like so it's, 200. So it's, it's the same thing as function parameters. Yes, yes. It's, it's the reverse of parameters. You pass some and parameters, uh, and you'll get some results. And working mm. with uh, very adic uh, parameters, it became easier in, uh, mm -hmm. in 5.1, I believe, uh, with uh, when you the three dots, mm -hmm. when you can iterate over three dots and so on. So, on. so but essentially, three dots is is like, what is the type of three dots? It's not It's not a table. And it no, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's strange. Uh, uh, so it's I like regret the three an dots. array is I lurking in the language in the form of three dots. Yes, I should remove three dots and go back to the old version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's much better. OK, thanks. You should not be afraid of creating tables when you need them. I'd like you to ask a question about your opinion about Logit which is a very significant fork of about your language. About what, sorry? Oh, about Lugit. Lugit. Oh, Lugit. Yeah, uh, uh, it's a significant fork of your language, which is quite popular, but it seems to be diversion significantly from uh, uh, the direction you develop and lose. So what do you think, uh, how will it ho well, how will it go in the future? I have no idea. It's a fork. I mean, it's diverted, and I have no idea whether it's going. Sometimes he says it's going to divert it to keep diverting. Sometimes it says it's not diverting. So I don't know. You but must ask I him, not me. I mean, I'm interested in, uh, um, I don't know, merging the effort in some way with Mike Paul or not. Do you care about this or not? I don't think he, he, uh, he well, first, I, I don't b want to do that. I mean, uh, we, he, I don't, I think it's, it's good if he wants to do his own language. I mean, Lua was always developed by us. We, we like it. And he started uh, diverting the language long before we did, and we didn't ask us anything. So I think uh, he, I don't, I don't feel like a, he he's really interested in that. The diversion started with Luajit a long time ago, much before we, we, we did anything. And so I, I don't see why the what's the point in it's a fork. Forks. Happens. Okay, thank you. So thank you, Roberto. Thank you.